and I was thinking, well, but why are these berries all dropped? But anyway, I did collect some that had dropped, and then I also collected some on the bush. And what I found was these, they obviously had had spotted weed drosophila. Like on this last one, you can see, especially this, this is a really characteristic berry down here of all these holes in here that, that, that the pupae have left here, the larvae have left here, and that, that was spotted weed drosophila. Um, and so I could see a lot of these berries here on the ground. Um, and, but then I also collected berries off the tree, and I set them up each individually. And so he had told me, I forget what my next slide is. Yeah, okay. He had told me that he didn't think he had any spotted weed drosophila. So I set these up, and it took, took about a week because I only picked firm berries, and I put each one in a cup. And what I found was there were 93% 90, of his berries were infested, and there were, uh, I got 2.8 larvae <coughs> pupae per berry. <coughs> Um, but he was he was satisfied with his control and his, he had no complaints from his customers and so protein. There, well what I think it is mostly is so I'm letting them sit in the cups for a week or so so I think a lot of the customers are going home with eggs the eggs aren't doing a lot of damage or not making that the fruit break down the way you might think they would but but you give the give those eggs a few days to hatch and the larvae to mature and get big because even the little larvae they don't cause a lot of damage but um, and I forget let's see I, I guess I started seeing larvae on September 4th and I collected them on August 27th so you know that's seven days or so before I started seeing the, the maggots in there but I was kind of surprised because he said he had been spraying weekly I, I, I'm not sure of his spray schedule Sometimes it's hard to get a straight answer out of a blueberry grower, just what they're doing, right? <laughs> so, but he had said he was spraying weekly, but I was just surprised that spraying weekly he still had so many spiderwing drosophila. But and again, the ones that were on the ground, I wasn't, I wasn't finding spiderwing drosophila. <coughs> so, if you have a basically firm, pretty firm berry, and you've got some larvae in there, and you, you're a customer, and you pick those berries, and you eat them right away. You're fine. They're fine. You're they're, not going to get sick. There's, there's no health problem with eating these. They're only feeding on blueberries. Yeah, that's not a health problem at all. It's and more so, appearance. It's more appearance. And if they, you know, go and pick them and leave them sitting on their counter for them to munch on for the next week, then there'll be a problem. And so encouraging your customers to freeze them or use them fast. Mm -hmm. And even if they use the soft berries, if they were going to make jelly or something out of them, mm -hmm. you ever did, done that with with maggot infested berries and you have them floating to the top, it's not, it's, yeah, not very pleasant. So really encouraging the, yeah, your customers to use them quickly. I think that's going to be essential. I don't know and the, you do that. Yeah, I'm just happy I eat them before the maggots come out. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm mean, not a farmer. What the raspberry <laughs> grower was doing, though, saying either, you know, to. They only so last what, a couple of days. They only last right, a right, couple right, of right, Don't see yeah. us. See you next <laughs> week. Keep Jack away from the customer. Right. 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 But no, but that, what Pam well, says is, yeah, they don't last long, so. A lot of people put them in the refrigerator, and I think the refrigerator probably slows up the process. The refrigerator can slow it up greatly. Right. And the people that come from us, I mean, they basically eat them within a day. Right. They yeah. say they put them, the kids devour, mm -hmm. you know, everything mm -hmm. they pick within a day. Yeah. Basically. So, for or they cook with them or make a pie or, yeah. you right. know, whatever. Yeah. So, so that's good. Just mm -hmm. encourage that. From you. Most of my customers are talking about mushy fruit. And they said, well, it must be because of the heat. And yeah. I, I never said a word. Yeah. <laughs> so they all thought it was because of the hot. Right. I never yeah. had a complaint about any maggot. We never Good. had a complaint, and That's I mean, I great. know a lot of later varieties, they, they did get soft, Uh huh. you know, and well. we closed down the field, you know, we still had a few there, then the turkeys ate it. Mm. And did, did you stop harvesting early? Well, it, what, what I was we, finding? we could have been open probably for a few more days. Okay. I also did a lot more spraying this year than I have, and I mixed, you know, I did malathion, I did the entire, you know, one of each class. Uh-huh. Um, is there any consensus out yet as to what worked the best? Yeah, the, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about pesticides in just a, just a minute or so. 
All right, yeah, I forget. Just, so anyway, the, so the berries that were on the ground, they did, they used to have spiderwing drosophila, and they had already emerged. I didn't want you to think that they, and that's why they were falling off. They, you know, they were falling off because they had the spiderwing drosophila, but they had already emerged, and they have a very quick life cycle. So, so with the fall raspberries, I started collecting some berries, you know, in the middle of September, and then at the beginning of beginning of uh, October and then and then I picked again I picked a fourth time just before Sandy hit actually it was a week ago I went and I wanted to get them because I thought it would be my last time so and this is this grower this is in a high tunnel he has this one one area of these raspberries and he was he, he was content with his control he had been spraying weekly until this time and then this had been eight days since he sprayed and I was getting at 21 maggots Herberry, but I was picking them perfectly firm. But within within four days, most of the berries looked like this. This one never did come down. So I had 89% infested the first time. But 21, I was getting 21 larvae or pupae per an average per berry. Um, and then uh, two weeks later, it went down to only 15, and then only 11. So I'll be curious to see what I got on um, the ones I collected October 29th. Nice high tunnel. Is oh, are they covered or are they just grown? So, so a high tunnel is the structure that's over them, and it's like a greenhouse. It's like an unheated greenhouse, and so actually, it is covered. And it's they're covered. still getting in there. Well, and it's it's not covered all the way, oh. and it's so that the sides are rolled up, and mostly it's to keep rain off of them, and it's really good for things like botrytis or gray mold yeah, for yeah. stopping that. So yeah, they're called high tunnels, but they're they're kind of yeah, they're like greenhouses. I know once they get into greenhouses, okay. yeah, then then there's. Yeah, they, they, they can do very well in there. And it's hard to believe, I mean, that that they, that they wouldn't get in. I mean, it's just so easy for them to get blown in. So, so yeah, there was talk about what you can do. So, you know, to set things up and to see what emerges out of them is good, but it takes, you know, 10 days or so to see what's really um, in there. So, what is being recommended is to collect berries. And first they were saying just take a random sample, but it really makes a lot more sense to go and check those soft berries if, if you want if you want to know what's inside your berries. Collect the soft berries, maybe the ones with holes, and putting them in a salt water solution. And and the what happens is it causes the, 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 the larvae to float up out of them. Especially you, you might need to squish the berries a little bit, but if you're taking squish berries to begin with, you probably don't need to do that. So in New Jersey, what they were doing at the experiment station was they were picking two quarts of berries and putting them in a bin and putting hardware cloth on top and then weighting them, weighting them down with, with uh, rocks or something and then putting the liquid in and to see how many would, would come up to, see, to um, see what was infested. So, you know, this is a good thing to do in your own patch if you're curious, if you want to know um, or if you're getting some complaints. And it also, you can use it for if you're spraying, well, you know, how good of a job am I doing spraying? You can check, check track captures, and you can also be checking the fruit to see what's in there or not. Okay, so what, what should you be doing? And so I think it makes sense to be a tra trapping flies in your place, especially um, <coughs> to, to get the first <coughs> flies. The problem with checking the traps is it's usually the females that fly first and they might be out for a couple of weeks before the males are there and so and if you don't know what the females look like um, anyway you need to be looking and you need really a microscope to be able to see that ovipositor well but trapping can also be helpful if you are spraying and you can sort of see you know do the, the does the number of flies actually go down after I spray I've heard somebody say that Spraying, sp spraying the insecticides, you're not really de decreasing the population of adults. What you're doing is protecting the fruit, protecting the fruit from egg laying. But it really doesn't do a whole lot to the numbers of adults that are present. So another, what do I have next here? Okay, so yeah, so yeah, catching, you want to catch the first flies so that you can know when to start spraying if you want to try and spray. Um, and then also the, the traps can help you let you know how good of a job you're doing spraying. And so mass trapping also, you know, as I mentioned, in Japan, I hear that they, they're using a whole lot of traps. It would be a whole lot of a pain in the neck to monitor all these traps, especially if you have 12 bushes or so. 
you know, that would be easy. I would set one up in every bush and maybe a, along the edge and uh, try and trap them out. Um, and even if you had an acre, but, but if you have more, yeah, more than an acre or more than even half an acre, I don't know, it, it would be, it'd be hard to do. It'd be a lot of work. And I'm not sure just how effective it would be, but it could be. Um, again, that the, the insects really like high humidity. You really want to put the traps in the shade in a really shady spot. So a lot of people, as I said, two places in particular that in Rhode Island that did really well this year and did not spray, they were in places where the bushes were really getting harvested very thoroughly. So, you know, maybe that means having somewhat fewer bushes so that your customers get in there and, and do a more thorough job, which sounds terrible, but, um, you know, if you...